Our profiles are ready for testing. Now we need to set the general test options. Here we specify the test duration and the type of load. We choose ramp up. This means that the number of virtual users will be increasing during the test. We choose initial and final number of users and how fast that number will grow. We can also choose how many users will execute each profile. Since we expect that only 10 of our site visitors will write topics, we make the same location of virtual users for our test. Now let's set the load for the reader's profile. We can also specify the log settings. To save our disk space, we'll create a full log only for the first user of each profile. Here we can select the load agents that will execute the test. Now everything is ready for the testing. Let's go! Soon after the test is started, we can see the first results on the summary graph. WAPT adds new data to the chart in the real time. There are several tabs with graphs. On the Errors tab, we can see all the problems occurring during the test. If we switch to the Summary Report view, we can see that the report data is also updated in the real time. Here we can monitor the number of sessions, page requests, hits, active users, etc. Let's switch back to the Summary Graphs view. We can see that starting from some test phase, the number of pages per second doesn't grow even under increasing load. This means that the server cannot process more requests. The average response time starts to grow correspondingly. Let's check the errors. We can see that the error rate has grown to 1%. Let's wait a bit more. The load has reached the maximum volume. As we can see here, the server performance has degraded even more. Let's check the errors again. The error rate has grown sharply. Let's wait for the test completion to see the final results. Now the test is finished and we can perform some analysis. We can change the scale to get more or less detailed data. We see that the average performance of our website was about 9.5 pages per second throughout the test. We see that the average response time grows together with the number of virtual users participating in the test. Let's check the errors again. We also see that the number of failed requests grows too. Starting from some test phase, all sessions fail. This means that every user faces errors.
This is an obvious failure. Thus, we have determined the limit of the number of users that the site can handle. Let's try to find the exact reason of the failure. We can check our logs for this purpose. We see that the server responded with a 503 HTTP error to some requests. And we see the error message inside the response body. Let's check the reader's profile. The very first session completed successfully. But later the same problem appeared here as well. We see that our website is able to serve only 10 page requests per second. It appears to be its limit for any number of users. If our quality requirement defines that the error rate should be less than 1%, the capacity of our website is only 70 users. When we have 100 or more users, every one of them faces a problem. The reason of the problem is the SQL Server component. This means that if we want to improve the performance of the whole site, we should change the SQL Server hardware configuration or tune its options.